The fabulous Freebirds were a prolific trio who rose to prominence in the 1980s in AWA. Their carefree and cocky attitudes were backed up by devastating in-ring power and technique which saw the various members of the Freebird faction obtain numerous title belts throughout the group's history. Since their run in the 1980s and 90s, the group has been inducted into the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame as members Hayes, Roberts and Gordy, whilst also being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame with all four members, Garvin, Gordy, Hayes and Roberts, attaining that honour. As Michael Hayes climbs up onto the ring apron, it's hard to ignore his glittering confederate flag, wrapped over his shoulders as a cape, beaming strobes of light around the crowd. It makes me feel a little uncomfortable, and as a non-American, I wasn't clued up on the history surrounding the symbol, and didn't want to pass judgement on the confederate flag without knowing some of the details. So, I went down an incredibly interesting and somewhat traumatic wormhole, watching documentaries and reading information online. To be honest, I was pretty shocked with what I found. The confederate flag was only the start. The following are direct quotes as I didn't want to pass judgement and be biased so I've laid them out for you as I found them. Although the confederate states of America dissolved in 1865, its battle flag has continued to receive modern display. The modern display began during the 1948 United States presidential election when it was used by the Dixiecrats, a political party that opposed civil rights to African Americans and supported racial segregation. Further display of the flag was response to the civil rights movement and the passage of federal civil laws in the 50s and 60s. The display of flags associated with the confederacy is controversial. The confederate battle flag is associated with pride in southern heritage, states rights, historical commemoration of the American Civil War, glorification of the Civil War and celebrating the myth of the lost cause, racism, slavery, segregation and white supremacy. In a 2001 essay, Old Times, They Are Best Forgotten, Emory University professor Lucas Carpenter observed that contemporary confederate sympathisers want free use of the confederate symbolism because they say it represents their heritage. It does, of course, but it is heritage chiefly characterised by its brutal oppression of slaves and their free descendants. The most important thing to know about the South is that until recently it was a region ruled by slavery and apartheid. The Confederate flag is a controversial symbol for many Americans today. A 2011 Pew Research Center poll revealed that 30% of Americans had a negative reaction when they saw the Confederate flag displayed. According to the same poll, 9% of Americans had a positive reaction, and a majority had no reaction. Among black Americans, 41% had a negative reaction, 10 a positive and 45 had none. In a national survey in 2015 across all races, 57% of Americans had the opinion that the confederate flag represented southern pride rather than racism. A similar poll in 2000 had a nearly identical result. However, poll results from only the south yielded a completely different result. 75% of southern whites described the flag as a symbol of pride. Conversely, 75% of southern blacks said the flag symbolised racism. On June the 30th, 2020, Mississippi relinquished their state flag, the last US state flag to have incorporated the battle flag in its design. On November 3rd, 2020, Mississippi voters approved a new state flag without the battle flag included. So it appears that this complicated issue of history, heritage and race looks set to unravel further, and I can certainly understand both points of view on the topic. I have no right to speak on the symbols of other people, but now, at least I and others who may not realise the history of this flag can be slightly better informed when perhaps they receive that uneasy feeling when presented with the confederate symbol. On the confederate flag and his prevalent use, Michael P.S. Hayes on the Ric Flair podcast said, You know, when we came to Texas, the Von Erichs would proudly um, take a flag from a fan of the audience and the Texas flag with the Lone Star and, and all that. So being the, you know, the nemesis in the uh, storyline, then we started taking the Georgia flag, which had the rebel flag in it, which I've always thought, just from a flag perspective, was a gorgeous flag. And 
So then we started making our outfits out of the rebel flags because, uh, hello, we're rebellious. <laughs> Never had anything to do with being racist. You know, then people like to say, well, they painted their faces like the rebel flag. Okay, if you look at history, the first and only time that we ever started painting our faces was when we were going against the road warriors, yeah. who also painted their faces and were notoriously known for being from the north. Um, so people read so much more into that. Man, I, I just don't think clothes and and images make bad people. I think bad people are bad people. Michael P.S. Hayes, when acting as head writer of WWE in 2008, attended a WrestleMania after party where after a drunken dispute with world's strongest man Mark Henry said this, something which Henry took great offence to and reported Michael Hayes to WWE HR, who quickly removed the head writer from his position and stripped him of his privileges as a producer and vice president within the company. I agree with Michael Hayes on that one thing. Bad people are bad people. Racists are bad people. Those who abuse their powers over others are bad people. Michael Hayes is bad people. <laughs>